Each year in the Music Hall of Stockholm, one of the world's most cherished honors is awarded. The Nobel Prize for Literature. George Bernard Shaw. Thomas Mann. Winston Churchill. Ernest Hemingway. Boris Pasternak. This award is for important achievement in the field of great Russian epic tradition. Because of the significance attached to the award in the society to which I belong, I must give up this undeserved prize. Please do not look upon my voluntary refusal with ill feeling. Few men have so strongly deserved what they were forced to refuse. Poet, translator, novelist. Boris Pasternak, in his final work, Dr. Zhivago, tells of all he saw and felt about the first 50 years of this century in Russia. <music> Boris Pasternak was born in Moscow in 1890. Leonid Pasternak, his father, was a noted artist who sketched and painted well-known singers, artists, and writers of his time. Boris Pasternak grew up in a house where music, literature, and painting were his constant companions. Leonid painted Leo Tolstoy, friend of the Pasternaks, and frequent visitor to the family. Boris Shalyapin, the Basso Profundo. Eric Maria Rilke, the gentle German poet. Sergei Rachmaninoff, the renowned pianist. Alexander Skriapin, the composer and idol of young Pasternak. This sketch of Boris by his father catches him as his family often saw him. His was the bright and shadowed world of the Russian forests, of nature, of music, particularly the music of his neighbor Skriabin. Pasternak wanted to be a composer Skriabin was his inspiration, but finally, he turned Pasternak away from music toward poetry. Boris's sisters, Lydia and Josephine, learned to play the piano from Mama Pasternak, herself a child prodigy. Pasternak was 15 when the first Russian Revolution of 1905 broke out. Almost 50 years later, in Dr. Zhivago, he was to write of the savagery and excitement of the days when he felt the lash of a Cossack whip. In 1910, Boris went with his father to attend the funeral of his friend Tolstoy. Before his death, Tolstoy left a message for Pasternak. All will pass. Money large estates, even kingdoms are doomed to vanish. But if there is only one grain of true art in our work, it will live forever. Two years later, in 1912, young Pasternak went to the university in the fairy tale town of Marburg, Germany, where he studied under the fat little philosopher Hermann Cohen, who became a counselor and friend to Pasternak. But the lectures of Professor Cohen were not a match for the canals of Venice, where Pasternak went to see and feel for himself the grandeur of Italy. Back home, Russia was reaching the edge of disaster. The days of Tsar Nicholas were numbered, and there began an era of violence, revolution, bravery, love and hate, which formed the background of Pasternak's Dr. Zhivago. Once the Bolsheviks were in power, some of Pasternak's fellow writers sang the praises of the revolution. Yesenin, Mayakovsky, Bloch, Gorky. Soon they were stifled, disillusioned, or exiled. Boris Pasternak, too, was unable to write as he wanted. For the next 20 years, he turned to translating the plays of Shakespeare, Schiller, and Goethe for the Moscow Art Theater, under the renowned director, Konstantin Stanislavsky. With the death of Stalin in 1953, there began a new day in the Soviet Union. 
Dr. Zhivago, the novel Pasternak was writing quietly over the years, was nearing completion. Dr. Zhivago is a novel in the tradition of Tolstoy, of Charles Dickens, of Victor Hugo, a book of many loves, of many wars, and many characters. But Dr. Zhivago was found unfit for publication in Russia. A publisher in Milan, Italy, Gian Giacomo Feltrinelli, to whom Pasternak sent his book, saw in Dr. Zhivago a remarkable novel. Despite strong Russian pressure to prevent it, Feltrinelli published Dr. Zhivago, and the book, Without a Country, appeared first in Italian. Soon it went around the world in 30 languages. In a remote corner of Indochina, one of the world's outstanding filmmakers, David Lean, was completing a film which was soon to whistle its way around the globe. Then to the desert in Jordan, where Lean went to make Lawrence of Arabia. Together again with Alec Guinness. And a new actor, Omar Sharif. After Lawrence, David Lean was drawn to Pasternak's Dr. Zhivago. With scriptwriter Robert Bolt, David Lean spent a year making Dr. Zhivago into a film script for Metro-Golden-Mayer. He found in Dr. Zhivago the story he feels so strongly. The eternal conflict of man with his environment. Zhivago is many men, devoted to his land, to his family, his country. Above all, a man who detested violence, but who was destined to spend his life in constant conflict. To play Dr. Zhivago, David Lean chose Omar Sharif. For Zhivago's mysterious half-brother, Yevgref, he selected Alec Guinness. For Zhivago's wife, he found Geraldine Chaplin, daughter of Charles Chaplin. And for the woman whom Zhivago would find and lose and find again, for Lara, he chose Julie Christie. For her tormentor, Komarovsky, Rod Steiger. It was Lara whose love made life bearable, who was hope, faith, and meaning during the human earthquake that was the Russian Revolution. Zhivago's time was a time of agonizing human hurt, of snow-covered barbarism in endless civil war. Zhivago's time was a time of passion, of tumult, of millions in motion, whose ordeal changed history. But more than this, Boris Pasternak's Dr. Zhivago is a story of love and the human spirit.